All right, so this video is gonna be a comparison between two Glocks. Um, these are both Glock 17 Gen 3 uh, models. That's what they're based off of. Uh, the one on the left here is going to be the Tokyo Marui G17. And the one on the right is the officially, officially licensed Umarex uh, Glock 17. So they're basically trying to imitate the same gun, uh, but they're different brands. So the one on the right here, the Umarex Elite Force one, that is the only one that uh, can legally be imported to America. Whereas the one on the left is going to be your kind of gold standard as far as uh, performance is concerned. And these are going to be only available outside of the US. You can't get these in America because of licensing restrictions. So we're going to start off um, over here with the the Tokyo Marui, so I'm going to put this guy aside, and they are going to be very similar. There's not going to be much of a difference, so just going over it real quick here. Um, the one that I got has threads on the front. Uh, this is just the way that the one that I got was imported, so yours may be imported with different orange tips. These are, these are not from Tokyo Marui, these are from a different company that imports them. But mine has threads, yours might not. Uh, they are not good threads. I recommend not ever using those. <laughs> um, I, re I recommend just taking off this orange tip as soon as you can. Uh, it's probably gonna fall off or break off anyways, eventually. Um, and so you have, uh, your texturing is gonna be the same for the grip between the two. Um, same thing up here. This one's gonna have your magazine, uh, like ripper router thing here. And I think the Elite Force one does not have that. So if I grab the Elite Force, you can see that it does not have the uh, the little moon there to rip out the magazine. And the the texturing is uh, very similar. So it's they're both aiming for the same exact texturing for the the finger grooves, and same thing with the uh, the the texturing on the sides. So those are both going to be the same there. The Tokyo Marui one does have a safety, whereas the Umarex one does not. So the Tokyo Marui one has a safety up here in the front. So it's basically where the serial number would be, and you can move that back and forth. So if I move it back, it's on safe. If I move it forwards, it'll be back onto fire. And that is kind of it. If your gun stops working, there's a there's a good chance that you might have just accidentally bumped that because I know. I know multiple people that have uh, accidentally bumped that and then they come up to me and they're like, why is my gun not working? Well, that, that would be your, uh, your problem there. And just to clarify, these guns you cannot get in America. Uh, they are, uh, they're not legal for import. So if you get them in America, uh, that's, that's all on you. Um, but these ones here, the Umarex ones, you can get, like even most sporting goods stores are gonna have the um Umarex Elite Force Airsoft guns. Make sure you get a good one if you go to a sporting goods store, but they should have, um, or at least all the ones near me have them. Going elsewhere on the gun, uh, both triggers are going to be very similar. They're both going to be plastic and everything. Obviously, it's a mostly plastic gun in the in the real world anyways. The, the thing that's going to be very different about the two is the Tokyo Marui is going to have a plastic slide, whereas the Elite Force is going to have a metal slide. And barrel-wise... Elite Force is going to have the metal barrel too, whereas the Tokyo Marui is going to have the plastic barrel as well. So it's full plastic upper versus full metal upper. Um, but they're both the same like styles. They're going for the same exact generation of Glock, same look basically. Now we're going to go. We're going to take the magazines out um, because I'm going to show you the the action of the gun a little bit, and I will touch on the magazines later because they are a little bit different. So, I have the Elite Force one right here. So the action on this guy is not the best. It's definitely a little bit clunky. It's got a it's got a stronger spring in there because it is made for American market instead of Japanese market. But a little bit clunky. Um, but it's perfectly fine for training. Uh, these guns are basically made for training purposes. That's kind of like the design thought behind them is they were designed specifically for like a like to go along with your real one basically. Um, so. Perfectly fine. You have a pretty heavy, a heavy trigger on there, um, or at least heavier than the Tokyo Marui is going to be. So we're going to go to the Tokyo Marui one. 
Let me put this one same spot, basically. Tokyo Tokyo Marui is gonna be like like buttery smooth, buttery smooth, very very smooth. Um, trigger pull is gonna be extremely light. So compared to that one, that this one feels like absolutely nothing. But it's gonna be very smooth, a little bit lighter uh, recoil spring because this is catered to the Japanese market, which is gonna be uh, lower FPS. Um, they're gonna be using plastic slides. They can't exactly handle stronger um, recoil. But that's the way that it's going to be on these ones. And we're going to go on to the magazines real quick here. So magazine wise, they both are very similar. So on the right here, we have the Elite Force Umar X1. And on the left, we have the, the Tokyo Marui. So the Elite Force one, you have a loading uh, loading zone. You can load anywhere in this whole entire upper, uh, like not even just upper section. This whole, basically the whole thing, you can load in anywhere from here. Whereas the Tokyo Marui one, you can only load in uh, that that little area right there. Um, not a big deal, but it is a difference to to be aware of. Another thing to be aware of is the feed lips are a little bit different. So we'll see if you can see here. But essentially, the Tokyo Marui one has a little ledge here. You can see how my fingernail is catching on that ledge. The Elite Force does not. The Elite Force is smooth on the front, which is a difference. And the the Tokyo Marui is going to be going to want to have this ledge. It might not function correctly um, if it has this one. It's up to you to try it, obviously. But as far as my experiences has been concerned. Um, Tokyo Marui's and the Action Army pistols, they all like having this little ledge here. Whereas like the, the Elite Force or the Wii ones, they don't care as much about that ledge. Another thing is that the shape is a little bit different. So you can see here how the Tokyo Marui one has a completely different uh, angle up here uh, from the Umarex one. And also, you might be able to tell that the Umarex one has an ambidextrous uh, magazine release cut. So it has a cut on this side and on the other side, whereas the Tokyo Marui is just the one, the one side, okay? On the top, um, the the little gaskets there are basically the same. They're both gonna be your radius one. Um, it looks like your uh, Elite Force one is gonna be sticking up a little bit more than your Tokyo Marui one is. I, I really do recommend you try to get the magazine for the specific brand, try not to to mix and match as much. Uh, the more you mix and match, the less it's gonna work correctly. Another thing to notice is the Tokyo Marui ones have this little stopper here. And that's gonna prevent the magazine from going too far into the gun or anything like that. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the camera, but there's a little stopper on there. And the Elite Force does not have that. It's just smooth on the back, all right? Um, that's gonna be about it for the magazines. They're both gonna have the same capacity, same same sort of thing there. I'm going to put them off to the side because we're going to take the guns apart just a hair now. So, they come apart the same way the rear ones do. So, you're going to hold it back um, and then you're going to do a slide, slide release and it's going to pop off. So, starting here with the with the slides. So you might even be able to tell already that Tokyo Marui one is brown a little bit, and that is because it is a uh, it's steel in there. Okay, so it has weathered a decent amount on the way here to America over time. Whereas this one's gonna be your aluminum parts in here, so it's not gonna really turn brown like the steel is gonna be. Okay. And the the whole blowback unit is completely different. It is completely different in the blowback area. So you're not going to be able to swap between the two pistols as far as blowback stuff is. Same thing with the with all the stuff in the front. Everything everything is completely different. So if you want to upgrade your Elite Force lock, you need to get Elite Force upgrade parts. If you want to upgrade the Tokyo Marui gun, you need to get Tokyo Marui upgrade parts. Okay. And beyond that. We're gonna go to the frames. 
so again you have different coloration because they're different materials in different uh sort of uh different way for them to get here basically um your back area is going to be very similar so um it's going to it's not compatible, but it's very similar, and your front area is going to be completely different. So just be aware of that. Doing any upgrades, if you've done it like a Tokyo Marui before, the Elite Force is going to be quite a bit different. They're not the same thing. And you can see on here, if I pull the triggers, this one, uh, the Umarex one, has a little rotor thing on here. Um, so this one has a rotor. The other one is going to be, it's going to have your, your little bearing thing there. So this is going to be much better for the gun, significantly less wear, a little bit snappier. Um, this one here is just going to be less good. Um, I haven't personally upgraded this, but I assume you can upgrade this to a bearing if you want to. But that will be something that you would want to do research on yourself because I haven't done it and I don't, uh, don't really plan on upgrading the Umarex one anytime soon because it's a bit of a pain. Um, so I'm going to put this back together. Um, and I'll give you my recommendation on the two. So basically, if you're going to be a player, if you're going to be a player, I recommend the Tokyo Marui one. It's going to be, it's going to have the most amount of upgrades and that sort of thing. If you're using airsoft for like training or something like that, um, the Elite Force Umarex one is going to be perfectly fine. It's going to be better actually because it's going to be closer to the real thing than the Tokyo Marui is. Uh, you just don't get all the upgrade stuff. And obviously, if you're in America, you probably are only going to be able to get the Umarex one unless you want to go through some uh, some hoops and bounds and stuff like that. Um, so that's my little video here on the differences. I, I probably missed a whole bunch of stuff. Um, now that I said that, I do, re I, I do remember Tokyo Marui one does come with uh, glow-in-the-dark sights in the box that you can swap out if you want to. Uh, the Elite Force one does not. Um... But that's about it. I don't have much else that I really can think of at the moment. So that's pretty much it for my video here. I do have a sneak peek or whatever at something new that I'm going to be building. Um, it's a trigger. Um, I don't have the gun yet, but this is the trigger for the gun. And that should be hopefully soon. I still don't have the gun. It should be here. I, I, I actually have no idea when it will be here, but ordered about a month ago. Still waiting for it. I um, mean, got all the hoops and bounds and all that sort of thing. But that's going to be it for me for this video. And we'll, uh, and we'll catch you guys next time. Have a nice day. different ways to ride if you'd have seen what i seen done what i done you'd be looking for